You may have been paying attention this week and you saw a four-star receiver by the name of Christian Leary. He's out of Orlando. He committed to Alabama. Um, to give you an idea, a lot of people think this may be one of the fastest, if not the fastest, uh, athletes in the 2020 cycle. Oh, look, Colin circled him with a ring of fire. That's, that's classy, Colin, especially when I read you what I'm about to read you. Henry Ruggs um, was one of the fastest players I've ever seen in person. I remember being at a game where his program of, I think he went to Lee Mont Carver or Lee Montgomery, they played Central of Phoenix City. And I'm standing on the field when a couple of 10th graders are playing against each other. And it's these receivers. They're just stud receivers. And I saw Henry Ruggs break a slant into the open field like you're kind of seeing right now, and I'd never seen a faster high school player. Then Central of Phoenix City has one do the same thing. Turns out I was watching Henry Ruggs and Justin Ross. So Henry Ruggs was a 10-5-8 guy in the 100 meters in high school. This Christian Leary cat right here is a 10-5-0 guy. Henry Ruggs broke the Alabama State record when he put that number up. Just to give you an idea of the kind of speed that we're looking at here. So this is not a Christian Leary segment. It just goes to show you what Alabama's been doing. But then I want to stretch it out a little bit. I think it's insane what they have done and partly what they've been allowed to accomplish in the state of Florida. They're not alone, by the way. This is just the latest kind of commitment that's redirected my attention to this. Right now, let me use Alabama since we're looking at them. Right now, Alabama has Ja'Cory Brooks. That's a five-star receiver from Miami, committed. They have a G.A. Hall. It's anyone's guess how to pronounce that first name. Four-star receiver from Tampa, committed. They just got Leary. We're showing you film right now. We just did four-star receiver from Orlando, committed. Yet what I just told you is they have the number one, number two, and number three receivers per 24-7 sports in the state of Florida, committed. The University of Alabama. I didn't say Miami. I didn't say Florida State. I didn't even say the University of Florida. That's a team that's ranked in everyone's top 10. I didn't say Florida. I said Alabama. It doesn't stop there, by the way. Jerry Judy, you know where he was from. Calvin Ridley, you know where he was from. Amari Cooper, you remember him. You know where he was from. Bama's got J.C. Latham committed right now, who's the number one offensive tackle, offensive lineman in the country. Some think he may end up being the top player in the country. He's a five-star offensive lineman committed. Now, he's at IMG in Bradenton, originally from somewhere up north. But, I mean, Trey Sanders is a recent commit of theirs, five-star running back from down at IMG. Tim Smith, they landed over Florida last year. Evan Neal, a five-star probably going to start at right tackle for them this year. Jordan Battle is a safety they got out of Florida last year, a couple of years ago, who will play a big role this year. Pat Sertain, anyone remember him? These are all just kids from the state of Florida that Alabama's landed in the last few years. How does this happen? Independent of how great Nick Saban is, independent of how great Alabama's been, how in the world has this been allowed to happen? How has the state, and more specifically, the in-state recruiting in the state of Florida allowed to dip to the point where programs, it's not even a struggle anymore. They come in the state and they raid it. Clemson does it. Alabama does it. Ohio State's had success down here. Alabama's not done in the state of Florida for this cycle. Neither is Clemson. Neither is Georgia. Georgia's had a lot of success down here. When you look back on this stretch in the history books, it felt, especially if you follow recruiting a lot, but just if you follow these programs, you follow the big boy programs and you're looking at the college football playoff and you're looking at the teams vying for national championships every year, none of them are there without the stockpile of talent that they are raiding from the state of Florida. This is the, I continue to tell you, the biggest hidden storyline in college football is every year that goes by, that Miami doesn't have their act together and Florida State doesn't have their act together. And as good as Florida may be performing on the field right now, they're nothing to write home about recruiting their state either. I, they are regularly being fleeced by teams like Alabama coming in their state. These aren't programs on probation. These are not programs that are under crippling sanctions. Others, other than maybe what they've imposed on themselves figuratively, this will be the story, continues to be the biggest story in college football. That's why I think the reemergence of Miami or Florida State would be so big twofold. Number one, because with those respective programs, it would give Clemson some competition in the ACC. Number two, it would at least somewhat shut off this pipeline. It's, it's not even a pipeline. It's like a fire hose of talent that's escaping South Florida. You really think all these kids grew up Alabama fans or Clemson fans? I mean, do you really think that kids at Booker T. Washington High School 
in Miami or, or Coconut Grove down in Florida, do you really think kids in Orlando and Tampa grew up saying a Clemson Tiger, uh, an Alabama, well, a Crimson Tide is not a, an adjective, but th th that's where I want to go. I grew up dreaming to move out of Florida and go away for college. That's not what they grew up dreaming. Everyone wants to stay home and play. You're not giving them a, a valid enough reason to stay home and play. And like I said, probably the one I'm disappointed in the most right now, this is just a snapshot in time, is the University of Florida. Miami's been bad. Florida State's been bad. Florida hasn't been bad. Like, they're, they're winning on the field. The reason I have trouble buying into Florida, to the degree that a lot of preview ma magazines have, and a lot of long-term prospectus-type outlooks have, is because they don't have the kind of elite depth that other programs have. And those other programs, ironically, have created that depth by coming into their state and taking their players. I know this sucks to hear, and some folks get mad at this, and they may call you like a gator, hater... Where am I wrong? I'm not telling you that you're terrible recruiting. You're not doing like USC last year, but you're not where you need to be. You don't have a staff that can match what Alabama staff is doing or Georgia's or Clemson's or Ohio State's. And they're having to come across state lines and they're still spanking all three major in-state programs down there. It just boggles my mind. I mean, we put out, Bud Elliott put out our 24 seven sports blue, tip, blue chip ratio last week which is quite simply a measure of which programs have more four- and five-star talent than three-star talent or less on their roster. Miami and Florida State aren't even on that list. Yet you almost have to try not to be on that list if you're in Miami or Florida State. But that's where we stand.